So they say hindsight is 2020. Um, and you have the unique chance in this talk to learn from other people's mistakes and also their successes. And with a founding date in 2018, Senam Games has a long history to tell you about of both commercial game development and contract work all in Godot. And they even launched their first game, Hauma, this September. So let's give a huge applause for that and also our speaker, Senat. Thank you, Beck. So hi, uh, very nice to see everybody here. Um, I'm happy to uh, give you this talk. So um, yeah, my name is Senat. I run Senem Games, which is a tiny indie studio here in Munich, uh, Germany. And um, so th just as a heads up, sis this will be kind of a high level overview talk over different topics. And um, it's kind of a broad topic actually uh, for 25 minutes. So uh, brace yourself, it'll be a little bit of a speed run. All right, let's jump in. So I just want to give you an idea who I am. <coughs> and um, yeah, regarding what it means like to run an indie business, I want to talk about these three things. The first is technology. The second is about ecosystem. And uh, biz dev, basically everything that brings money. OK, so who am I? So it's a while back that I started uh, university and I loved computers, so I started with computer science. And um, I was clueless for a long time until I had a seminar for on OpenGL and that was like awesome and that was great. Um, so <coughs> for this talk I actually googled this project, I did it in 20 2007 and never opened it again. It still runs actually, uh, it's sourced on SourceForge. Like, um, yeah, so that was with C++ and OpenGL, and I wanted to make a big RTS. Um, I got to some some stage, I, I managed to put something there. And um, two years later, I was finished with, with uni, and I wanted uh, so bad to get into the games industry. Um, and I started at a game studio here in Munich, um, which did this game, which is now a quite big franchise. I think Dungeons 4 is about to come out this week or something like that. So that's fantastic. They're doing a great job. And um, yeah, it was still at the time when we did custom our own in-house engines uh, on top of Ogre. Which so we had the rendering covered. And this was with C-sharp, so .NET. And we did some things uh, like, you know, integrating Lua as a script engine, networking layers, and component-based, like game objects, so um, everything from scratch. That, that was really, really lots of fun. And after that, uh, I turned my back to game development because it can be tedious. And since I'm in Munich, I went to a big car company. And um, I worked with OpenGL. I did some 2D visualizations. So that was on a head-up display on the windshield, which was like really, really cool back then. And uh, finally enough with Java, and uh, because that was their framework. And then, in, again, two years later, I want to start my own games, do, and we built something now with Unity 3D. This was actually the project I did to learn Unity 3D. Um, so it was awesome to have a game engine like ready. You don't have to build everything from scratch. That was really, really, really cool, and I loved Unity 3D. Um, so, and since I built the networking layer earlier, this was multiplayer. So it was like an RTS with <laughs> cute orcs, and they hit each other. And um, we didn't get the funding, um, but it was still a great experience. Um, another game I worked on um, a bit later is also in Unity 3D. So this was kind of a game for mobile devices with up to 50 players in parallel, kind of like, I, yeah. So, and here I also worked on the back end. So I worked now with JavaScript, and there was this service called Parse. I don't know if anybody remembers that. Like um, Facebook bought them and killed it, but. Um, yeah, and even later, I, th I, I turned my back to game development. I went into iOS development, and that was kind of still a little bit new, not exactly new, and a bit exciting. So um, yeah, I worked with Objective-C, I worked with Swift, I worked with Python, because we were doing a little bit some AI image classifier things. Um, so I worked basically with a whole bunch of different things. And now I'm working with Godot, and that's since 2018. So I returned to gaming. Um, I started my own games company called Salem Games. We're completely remote, 
completely asynchronous, and we're also like in different places all over Europe and sometimes other other continents. And um, so we released released Hauma, our debut title, two months ago. It's a visual novel. Uh, it looks like this comic book noir, and you're a detective. You're doing detective work, and um, if you don't know it, look it up. Uh, if you buy it, thank you. If you played it, please write us a review. Um, all right. So that's my background. <coughs> so the first thing I want to talk um, is technology. Oh, basically, like how, how does it how did go to work for us from the development um, point of view? And uh, I think the important thing is that so <laughs> I, I'm not a solo developer because. I can do exactly one thing, that is programming, so I have to get lots of other people um, to help me. So, um, yeah, I want to talk about programming, game design, different like 2D and 3D art, audio and localization. How did that work? Um, so, programming, um, so I have like years of experience in, in C Sharp, like before I started using .NET, and I jumped in GD script, into GDScript, and I really, really love it. I, I'm not looking back, basically, and um, yeah, w like, and also for us, it's very important that we integrated like another script, script language, which is called Inc. Um, and uh, basically, we built dialogue systems, and l like, it's kind of like a point like adventure. So we have scenes, close-ups, hotspotting, and we have like during different projects, we did lots of small 2D mini games, basically. And for me personally, I, I feel like super productive in, in Godot, like it's really, really nice. Um, like regarding game design, like I, I worked with different game designers, like we had three only on Hama and we had other projects as well. And they never touched Godot and they don't want to touch Godot. So, um, so basically, um, so we're using the Ink Engine, like it's, it's a dialogue scripting language, but it can also do other things. Um, right. So, um, so the game designers can write dialogues there. They can write game logic, UI logic. Like we have this mind board mechanic, so they can just define what is in there, what combines with what, um, and this separation of concerns worked really well, like uh, for us. <coughs> so the regarding 2D art, there was no. No problems at all. So they work like for Hauma, they worked in Photoshop and Clip Studio Paint. And I just get PNGs, they get briefings. Um, that's easy. Um, for we didn't have a big 3D uh, project. We did build some prototypes and we want to go into production also soon. So, um, like some of the artists, they know Godot very well, so they kind of integrated that stuff also. But some just work in Maya and hit the export button. Um, to, to GLTF, and that's I never had an issue with that. And like our VFX artists, um, the ones we worked with, I'm not sure anybody's here. Like really, really knowledgeable in. in ah. So if you need a VFX artist, there's a good one over there. <laughs> Hi, Casper. <laughs> right. So that's like very deep integrated, of course, in the engine. And um, yeah, audio for us. Uh, hasn't been such a happy experience, so it's been hit and miss. Um, I don't have it here. We also had two projects exporting to HTML5, so different browsers, mobile browsers. So basically, we had to go through JavaScript and use HowlerJS because I couldn't, like, we couldn't get it running like um, a native one in the browser without stuttering and stuff like this. But it's possible. Like the workaround was maybe one or two days of work, so I, I didn't mind that. And then in Hama we used, um, like for the prototype, <coughs> we used Godot like vanilla, um, which was very limiting. So we switched to FMOD for production. And um, yeah, in Godot 3, the, the add-on, it was not really production ready because we do some, like for the voiceovers, once people start clicking away that and lots of stuff happened, we had like just blank crashes. So we had to pull that out of um, FMOD. But my audio engineer, who I trust a lot, has loads of experience. Like he says, that uh, add-on for Godot 4 is like rock solid. So looking for, forward to that. Yeah. We haven't switched to Godot 4 yet, but probably will soon. 
um, localization, all happy faces, like that would re work really, really well. So we have text in ink, we have in, in you know, some CSV sheets, and that just, everything goes into one big, like, table, like CSV file, that goes to Google, Google Drive, and the uh, translators, they type in the different languages, it goes back into Godot, and it just works. It's really um, straightforward, yeah. Okay, um, moving on to ecosystem. So ecosystem can mean, I, I mean, mean it's there's a bit very broad, um, broad thing. So for me, what was relevant was hiring. Um, what happens when I get stuck or things don't work, and how to learn different parts and aspects of the of the engine. So hiring, um, I, I I get to know got to know some people in the. Um, job board in the Godot Discord server, that one's really good. And even like um, when I was first looking for a VFX artist, um, I didn't know Kubishe and she like kind of applied. And then later when she was in the project, I learned she's on the core team and she's like super knowledgeable about Godot uh, engine. So basically when I had questions, I could just like hit her up. That was really cool. Um, <coughs> Then for artists, lots of we find through ArtStation. So, like I said, they don't have often, and they don't need to have specific good knowledge. Um, and then in my personal network, for example, here locally or s somewhere else, um, it's like I got to know lots of people who already use Godot and are enthusiastic. So, um, yeah, that's how it worked for us. And getting help, uh, interestingly. What worked really well for me was Twitter, and um, I, I don't know, so I, like, I'm, I'm not there anymore. I still have to find out if Mastodon is, which I'm now, is equally well, but I, I guess yes. And um, so, I don't know, we had some roadblocks, like, with web exports and stuff like this, and I would just, like, ping the, uh, like, the devs, like, Hugo on Twitter, and I would get, like, the best answers. So, that was, like, <laughs> really, really... Uh, Really great. Um, if you ha if I had people like personal contacts on on Twitter, like I mentioned one before, that worked as well. Um, yeah. Apart from that, I don't know. Like the the Discord server is like way too busy. Like if I write something, there it just disappears. And um, I don't use the forums. I would love to use the QA uh, web page, but nobody's there. So I think maybe we should. Yeah. It, it's okay, it worked out for me, maybe um, we could get other things going there. <coughs> um, learning, for me, I love the documentation. It's really, really, really great. Um, also, like, sometimes people complain about YouTube, but for me, um, it's, it's cool, like, to see visually what people do. I can follow that workflow. And then also a lot of trial and error, like, in the engine. Um, banging my head against uh, stuff until it works. All right, so BizDev. Um, so these are basically um, everything that, that got us uh, income so far. So talking to publishers, work for hire, serious games, and um, public grants. <coughs> so um, for Hama, I think we talked with 30 publishers or so. So um, interestingly, may maybe that's changing or has changed, but they never heard about Godot. Like, uh, um, and I think they also, but they quite, I think they was quite open, it, like as long as it can um, as, as bring games to consoles. Um, so that's a big one, I think, for publishers. And I always, always said like, yes, it can be, we can bring it to Nintendo Switch, other platforms, I don't think so. I have no idea. Um, I can do it, and um, it was good enough. Oftentimes, um, I think the bigger the publishers are, like um, we, we talked with a quite big uh, publisher from from um, here from Germany, and um, you know they would regularly go to Xbox and PlayStation. They have these networks, and um, sometimes maybe they have a deal with one of those platforms, and they want to bring the game to those platforms. So I think it's a bigger publisher, it's more important. <coughs> and 
and um, yeah, I, I, and this the red X, lower X. Um, I think um, I think is working on that. Maybe it's solved or soon to be solved. Yeah. Okay, and clients. Interestingly, all our clients wanted this, and um, it makes kind of sense for them because everybody of those they had some content on some websites, and they wanted to have games there now as well, but they don't want people to download anything. They want just like to go on the website, click, and it runs. <coughs> and um, so this worked out for us. Like we made several projects, like. Um, actually with the same engine as Hama, so it was like narrative kind of serious games. And um, it, and they all wanted us to run on mobile browsers. So, um, I mean, I guess there's engines that can do that better, but for us, like, we already have like our, um, our pipeline and way to work in Godot, like with the Ink engine and stuff like that. So, um, Godot was good enough. <coughs> Even like um, two of the games, they crash every time on my Windows on my iPhone 11, so, um, but it's fine, like, it's not the target. Like, uh, this client, he wants, they wanted it to run on iPad, uh, so it's okay. <coughs> it runs on most devices. Um, public grants don't really care about this stuff. I always write that we're very innovative because we're using open source engine. Don't ask me if it, if it helps, but um, I, I can imagine for some grants, like, for example, the European Union one, where they do care about sustainability and stuff like that, that it could be a bonus point, but it's just speculation, basically, yeah. <coughs> All right, that was the big level overview. Thanks a lot. Okay, thank you so much, and uh, we still have a little bit of time for questions, so if anyone has a question, I see hands going up. I saw you first, and then in the back, and you I can remember, but after that you will have to help me. <laughs> Thanks very much. I just wanted to, because you said the point about Xbox and PlayStation, I wanted to emphasize, please make uh, the compatibility for Xbox and PlayStation um, that would be brilliant. Yes, that's the publisher, publisher talking, right? We have a fan, I see. Um, okay, the very back, and then you. Um, do you have to handle your own marketing, or is that your clients typically? And what do you do for that? Uh, marketing what we do um, so um, so we, we do like we do two kind we do two kind of projects like some are like um, work for hire projects so um, those were serious games and um, so the clients they we don't do marketing for them we just develop the game right and um, like w one of the those games was a language learning serious game for a big institution in, in, in Germany, so they have their ways to reach the, the audience, stuff like that. And um, for, um, for Hama, for like in-house like production, like um, we have, t right now we have two people who do like community management and social media and all that stuff. And we do have a publisher, which is Assemble Entertainment, and they do additional like marketing. So. Um, does it answer your question? Yeah, awesome. Okay, we have our next question here, and I will be keeping an eye out for the next hands. I uh, already see one. Go ahead. Hi, um, thanks for the presentation. I'm, I'm really into serious games, so I was curious if you can kind of expand on that area of your business, kind of uh, who your clients are, or kind of how you come across these projects, and, and so on. Oh, how, how, to, how to acquire clients, is that it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, acquiring clients. That, that's 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 a tough one. Um, I I guess I guess um, there's maybe also people here who are better at this um, than me. Basically, um, yeah. 
basically for us, a um, lot of clients came through, through personal contacts, basically. So I know a, a game designer who's worked for with, um, so the project was for Goethe Institute, like German language institute. He worked for them for several years. And he worked with me on Hauma and he really loved this kind of ink uh, workflow. So we worked on that. But um, yeah, I, I, I think um, what I think what helps to acquire clients is getting into touch with lots of people, you know, going to conventions and stuff like this can help a lot. And just um, pinging people like what's happening with you and, and being like in, in personal contact. That's like um, a lot of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Our next question is over here. Yeah, the question is, what was the most effective way for you to find, or like to be hired, to be hired? Uh, I didn't get it quite, so what effective way to? Yes, what was the most effective way for you to be hired? Uh, to get hired? Yeah. So, um, okay. So for this stuff that I worked here, I didn't get hired, but I did, I did um, like find the budgets and hire, hire people, basically. And um, yeah, I, I think, um, yeah, I, to give the super short answer, in, in one word, I would say portfolio and prior work. If, if I can see that the people did great work, then I expect they will do Great work again, right? And um, maybe if you're uh, a very junior or beginner or a student, um, yeah, I, I think a good way to get this, uh, to build up your portfolio and work experience could be through internships, you know? Yeah. Do we have any more questions? We have five more minutes, so there is room for questions. I see a hand, perfect, and uh, then at the back. Um, uh, hello, very good talk. Uh, in the beginning, the title was The Good, The Bad and The Ugly. Mm -hmm. was, what was the best, the worst and the most ugliest thing you experienced while starting an indie company using Godot? The best, the worst and the ugliest? So, um, so the, the best thing... Um, so when I started this, this company, um, I, I, I had the complete freedom. I didn't have to judge everything by business um, decisions because then you have to think a little bit broader, for example, console support and everything. So I was looking at it more like from a programmer's uh, mindset and I really loved working in Godot and just took it and I said, if it has a little bit still of bugs, I can work around it. And if I can just export to Windows, it's fine. I publish it on Steam. I just want to work with Godot. That's it. And I was a bit fed up um, with the engine I worked before, right? Um, and um, so working in Godot has been a blast, like f for me personally. Um, I don't think there's like, so it worked out for us, obviously. So there wasn't like a big um, showstopper. Um, there are annoyances. Like I think the biggest thing was the whole audio um, ex experience. Um, we have to find workarounds. Um, yeah, th th there's there's other things as well. I, um, I I think that for us it was rather small. Like I can't say like this was the big bad thing or the big ugly thing. Um, because I w otherwise, maybe I would have switched already. I, I don't like big, bad, ugly things, basically. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we have one more question here, and we have time for another last question. So, uh, you see a hand. We have a question logged in. Hi, Sinat. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I know already that you have a, like a team that is not in an office. You have like people everywhere, right? And um, I'm interested in how you communicate or how you make sure that everybody is uh, updated. And yeah, how how is your project management basically working? Okay, okay. So that um, thanks for the question. So we are running exactly like I said. We're running a remote company. And it's asynchronous. Asynchronous meaning that I can't get an answer now um, because 
Well, we also work with a lot of the free freelancers. It can even be he's gone for a month because he has another project, he will return. So communication is really, really hard to get right. Um, so we have to write a lot. So we have to write and read from each other or more often than we talk with each other, basically. And um, like we do have the group chat and everything. So um, I, I have to, I have to neck, pull, p push people all the time. Like they should write at least once a day. Or at least when they do anything, please write it in there because if you like, if you remote team and do, don't write your progress, like in the progress channel, it's like you don't exist. Like it's it's really really hard. Um, it's much easier when you're in an office. And um, yeah, I mean, we have been really small teams most of the time, so we we just I I just let it flow. It was like kind of a chaos that came to an end somehow, you know. And for um, Hauma, we were like up to eight people, and it kind of, I kind of feel, felt it like falling apart. So um, it, it works until, until a certain number. So um, with the eight people, it starts breaking apart. So we have to make that better on the next project. We have to get some um, dedicated person on the project man management for sure, like, or producing, yeah. Okay, thank you for this answer. We have our last question of the day uh, of this talk uh, over here, and I sure hope it's an uh, easier one than the last one. <laughs> yeah, pretty fast one. Uh, you mentioned that you did a lot of work like integrating uh, FMOD and uh, Ink Engine. Are you planning into releasing back that to the community's extension or the DON or something on the store? Mm -hmm. Let, let's say like the store, the plugin. Okay, so if we plan to. Um so, so it's about the uh, FMOD integration to Godot, right? Um, yes. Yeah, so, so there is already add-ons, like there's an add-on for th for 3.5. Um, th I think there's even two, like one is on built on top of the other, um, and and we used it. And I I didn't exactly work in it, like our audio engineer worked in it, and he was not very happy. So I would say it's not really production ready. It, it can really break your neck. Um, basically, pr from our experience, um, even if that may sound harsh, I'm, I'm sorry. And um, and so so we, we just use this. We we don't we didn't change it basically. And um, there's another one for Godot four. Um, again, like um, my my audio engineer, he, he said that it's r really really good. So um, we look forward to s to switching to, to Godot four and using that that add-on. Yeah. Okay, thank you again for the answers and thank the audience for all your questions and for being here. And one big round of applause for Senat.